The Lightbringer's Legacy Once upon a time, uh, wait, no it was not so long ago, three generations, roughly 60 years. I've seen records of it and heard my grandmother's tales, but you, you may be too young. So not so long ago, there were more people on the surface of our world. Humans, elves, dwarves, you know them, but the goblins, orcs, ratlings, and raptosaurians were there as well. You may have seen a couple of them, but in that time, they used to form entire nations. The rules weren't the same. Things were simpler, yet death was part of everyday life. Everyone knew the border between civilization and the unexplored, savage lands. You could be attacked during travel and had to keep weapons by your side. It was a wild time. And then, a mysterious someone, or something, managed to unite the so-called barbaric folks against the rest of us. Our foes called their new leader the Darkness. Its dreaded emissaries, the Agents, came alongside monsters of a long-lost age. They showed, then taught, the power of darkness to these people. They firmly believed in the rule of nature over civilization, of might over law, of night over day. A brutal war began with the clash of royal armies. It ended seven years later with everyone, from the peasants to the kings, fighting for survival. Our great-grandparents won, not because they were stronger, but thanks to dedication, cooperation, and lore. The best blacksmiths allied with the best enchanters to create superior weapons and armor. Then the best warriors led the final charge against the darkness. These champions were nicknamed the Light Bringers, as they brought hope, light, and burning justice to the world. Their savage foes could do nothing against the combined might of craftsmanship and magic. The Light Bringers slew the agents and the monsters born of the deeper pits. Then they went beyond the wild borders and spared no one. The remaining warriors, the women, and even the offspring were chased down. The dark folks nearly disappeared, and their homelands became our new kingdoms. As peace was finally restored, the Lightbringers quickly became symbols of a horrible war. As soon as possible, the kings and queens put them aside and scattered their outstanding weapons out of sight of the rabble. The bloody hands were washed, the bad memories were shut. Order was restored for everyone's benefit, and people grew blissful in ignorance. The victories expanded during 60 years, and here we are. Hey, listen, young one. You may have heard the rumors about the destruction of remote villages, the disappearing people, the chilling noises, the shepherds here in the mountains. Our leaders have spies and have certainly heard them too, but they are talking and trying to get others to do the job. And you? Do these rumors ring any bells? I'm sure they do. You have that fire in your eyes. The same spark that ignited the Lightbringer's gaze. I have it too, and we're not the only ones. My friends, are sure these events herald the beginning of something bigger? Can you feel it? The darkness returns. I'm not one of the silent and happy lambs, and neither are you. I want to find out by myself. I don't want the war to start again. I need proof for all to see. I need glory. I need gold. Claim your legacy and join us in the brink of darkness. Only four heroes have come to fight back the darkness and claim glory for themselves and their team. And we have for our first one, Ostara, the Paladin of Fury. She has a long sword for fighting and some leather armor for protection. Next, we have Bajorn, a bone crusher. He has his trusty axe and leather armor as well. Next, we have Ajax, the battle wizard. He has his trusty staff with leather armor for protection. And last but certainly not least, we have Sybil, the Blood Moon Night Runner. She has her short bow and leather armor for protection. These four heroes, these light bringers, decide to take Quest 8, the big game hunting. For they have reliable sources that spoke about a location of strategic value. This place is an outpost of the darkness enforcers. It holds several prized artifacts and maybe more clues to the darkness's next move. Striking the monsters down could spark a light of hope in people and grant you a place in some history book. Are you strong enough to undergo this quest, Lightbringers? Let's find out. Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Hope you guys are excited. I just uh, wanted to set the mood for you all for massive darkness. Yeah, that's right. We are going to play Massive Darkness. I showed you guys at the beginning all the boxes that came with this game. It's insane. <laughs> and just 
some of the enemy minions, um, which hopefully we won't see all of those. But um, today I'm going to be doing a four-player playthrough. We're going to do Quest 8 because there's a lot of really good playthroughs already out there for the tutorial playthrough. And so I thought, you know what, you guys... I want you to see what this game can be, and you're gonna be able to see that through this Quest 8. Now, there's 10 quests in the basic game, and so I'm doing Quest 8, so it's not even the end of the total scenarios, but you can kind of see where the um, difficulty ramps up, so to speak, here. Uh, so, And I'm also playing with four because I, I feel like with four heroes, you can kind of see how the heroes work together, and it just makes the board a little bit more fun, I think. There's just a lot going on. But with that, I may miss a couple things because, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on. So please put comments in the notes below, or sorry, comments in this the video after it, after you watch it, put some comments down there, and then I can uh, make those subtitles. Yeah, don't forget, turn on your Klingon subtitles. That way, if you're watching this and uh, I've got some notes, you guys can see that so that you don't miss out. Just like normal, you guys, this video is gonna be a setup video only. If you want to see how to set up the game, especially for Quest 8 and the specific rules, hang out here. Otherwise, jump to the videos after this one for the actual playthrough. I will say this is Quest 8, and we're playing with four heroes, so or light bringers. So that means this might be a little bit of a longer playthrough. I hope that's okay with you guys, but I'm hoping that you and I can enjoy this journey together. And I did want to point out my wife's great addition. She added the yellow duck of pain. That's what I decided to call it. But she thought there needed to be a little color over here. And I, I don't disagree if, if I only could paint, right? But there's too many here. <laughs> but so we decided to add the duck for a little bit of enjoyment. Hope you guys like that. Let's first talk quick about the Quest 8 and how to set up the board um, for your actual play. So down here, it tells you the tiles that you need. 1R, 5V, etc., etc. I already have all those out. You'll just need to find them. The R's and the V's are on opposite sides. So there's going to be a 1R and a 1V, and a 5V and a 5R. So you'll just have to find those right numbers, flip them to the right sides. For this specific quest, our objective is complete the objective to win the game, destroy the pillars that lead to the enforcers, and kill all three of these roaming monsters. Yes, so I'm going to be having large roaming monsters, and I have to defeat the three specific ones that we're going to spawn at the beginning of the game. Where we spawn them, you can see these locations. This says roaming monster spawn starting zone, and you've got these three locations here, here, and here. Now, I have this map facing upside down to what you're going to see in the playthrough, but it's because all of the words are, are right side up. So just flip this <laughs> map the other way, and that's what you're going to see when we start with the playthrough. There are a couple special rules. You can see them over here. So we're going to have to start by spawning three greater roaming monsters randomly in each of the zones indicated on the map, so these three. Then um, each of, the, the, of them are going to spawn with level four treasure, and you'll see how that works shortly. Also, we have to have pillars. So heroes can't move or attack through the pillars. Pillars have five health and no defense and can be attacked as if they were enemies. And then, of course, we have our enforcers here. Each of the roaming monsters that start on the board do not activate until the two pillars on their tile are destroyed. And then when, when one of those monsters, that's what I'm assuming this is saying. It says when a monster is killed. I, no, it's when one of those three specific greater roaming monsters are killed. In addition to the equipped item, the hero who killed it can also draw three level four treasure cards and a random artifact card. So yeah, you're going to see the power progression in this game because we're going to get level four weapons. We're going to get artifacts. I mean, it's going to be insane. <laughs> Other items to note here, you can see that there are uh, little different tokens here on the board. So since I do have the full Kickstarter version of this game, you're going to see all those as minis. If you do go out and buy this just on retail, they're going to be little uh, chits instead of the actual minis, but they're essentially the same thing. Any of the red locations means that there are closed doors. Any of the green spots means that there are green doors, means that they're open doors, not closed. And then these are pillars. And there's an exit here, although I don't know why there's an exit because it's not like you're going to be exiting this scenario. But it's there just in case. Here's the first tile that we're going to start off on. You can tell that by, by this token that we've placed here. That is where all of our heroes will start. So I'll place all four of our heroes in that location. 
Then you can also see there's this one token here. That means that everything that we draw in this location is gonna be at a level one. So level one treasures, level one guards. Uh, if we have to draw a roaming monster, it'll be the lesser roaming because it's between a level one and a level three um, for the level of that specific tile. Once we move on to the next tile, this two will become active and this one will flip back, flip over to be inactive. And now going forward, Everything that we draw will be a level two treasure or a level two guard. It'll still be a lesser roaming monster until we get to level four, but um, otherwise everything will be at level two. For this quest, we need to now spawn three major roaming monsters. However, what I would like to do is add a theme here. And I'm gonna say, I have the elementals as one of the expansions that's, I, uh, that's gonna be included in this play. And so there are four of those. We've got fire, earth, water, and air. And what I would like to do is I'm gonna randomly shuffle these and have three of them out. So it's like we have to defeat three out of the four elements to be able to win the game. So I'm gonna give these a shuffle and randomly draw one each. This first one that'll go on the left side will be the, ooh, the wind elemental. Cool. And the treasure, we'll just draw a level four treasure, will be, ooh, a healing potion. Actually, that's great. That's going to give him no benefit. That's nice. Okay. Our second one will be the, oh, yes, the earth elemental. Now, here's the thing. The earth elemental's ability means that he gets two pillars, but we've used all the pillars right now, so I'm just going to make a note to the next time we defeat two pillars, we'll put those two pillars over by his area because he's going to spawn in the middle back, so we're not going to get there very quickly. He's going to have the orb of courage. Oh, that sounds kind of scary. Oh, but it's magic. Maybe that'll be okay. All right. Our third one, so we've got what? Earth and water. So this is going to be fire or wind. Oh, we've got the or air. We've got our air elemental. And our air elemental is going to have the kite shield. Oh, three blue dice. Wow. Okay, cool. So those three we're going to spawn. This other one, I'm just going to shuffle in, and we may see the fire elemental if we just randomly draw it. But otherwise, we at least have three of them. We'll spawn our awesome-looking water elemental right here. Now, don't forget, they're going to be inactive until we break those pillars down, and those are going to be the pillars over here. The air elemental will be placed right here. She's ready to go jump out that door, and she just looks so cool. She's got such a active looking miniature and then i just love how i've got all these minions out here ready to aid her oh boy and then we have our final elemental earth yeah he's gonna be back here and i say final just because this uh room is gonna be at a level five so i'm not gonna go there until i go to the level four rooms because i don't want to have level three weapons jumping into a level five room with only level three weapons. Yeah, not a good idea. So I'll probably go to the two outside ones, the level fours, and then come in and try and take out that earth elemental. But we'll see all that in the playthrough. And now I've placed my three elemental cards down on the table here. We won't need those right away, but when we get there, we will activate them as appropriate. Now you can see I put the items underneath them. If the numbers that the items add to their dice pool is under something that they already have. So let's say, like for this one, she already has uh, shields. So now she'll get to roll three blue dice and two green dice for defense, which is insane, okay? Uh, but for our earth elemental, because this item is adding one magic of a yellow and a red, but he doesn't inherently have magic, he has melee attack, that's actually not adding anything for him. And this item for this water elemental isn't adding anything for him either. And what's awesome is when we do defeat them, because of course we're going to win this game, <laughs> when we do defeat them, uh, we get to take those items. So if they know how to use them, they're going to use them. But if they don't, well, then sucks to be them, and we get a nice little advantage. So we get an advantage for at least two of them. I'm not going to complain about that. I should say, also, if they can use the item and it has text here where it lets them do something uh, additional and it's not hero specific they also can get that ability so you got to watch that but i think this one's just yep this the only one that they're actually able to use is the shield right now and it's just three blue dice 
Massive Darkness certainly lives up to its name with the amount of different types of decks of cards you're going to have. You're going to have your five different treasure types, your five different guard types, and then your lesser roaming monsters and your greater roaming monsters. You'll also have anytime you open a door, so your door cards, you're going to have your event cards, artifacts, which normally you'd actually take off the board and not use, but because in this playthrough, every time we defeat one of those big three elementals, we're going to gain an artifact. So I'm going to leave these out. And then starting equipment, also, you don't have to have this out, and I'll take this one away, because we've already picked out our starting equipment. And you'll see what that starting equipment does for each character during the playthrough. All you need to do when you set up for the game is shuffle all the respective piles make sure you put in all of the extra stuff that you want in. So I put everything in so you guys could see anything here. I mean, we can see reptilians, we could see more elementals, we can see goblins, dwarves, I don't even know. <laughs> so well, we'll just have a lot of fun. There is one other specific card you want to make sure you set up, and that's your life bringer. So if anybody goes down to zero health, they can come back at the beginning of, their next, of, the, of the next round by using one of these two tokens. But if we've used those two tokens and someone is killed, game over okay so this is kind of our counter if anybody dies we lose one of those if three people die we lose the game i'm not going to go through every hero in detail because you're going to see them more than enough during the playthrough but i thought i'd show you a little bit about them so you understand them when you're seeing the game so the first thing is over here is your health every hero starts with five health no more no less during the play, you might be able to level up to get to a higher levels of six or seven, but the most you ever can have is seven. And of course, if you ever go down all the way to zero, you have been killed. Each Lightbringer has a shadow ability, which lets them do things in as long as they're in shadow spaces. They also have a regular special ability. And then down here, they have a suggested class that you can um, use for that specific character. But that's usually only for beginners. I will say that I only have one that's using the suggested class. All the other ones, I pick different ones. Kind of for fun and kind of because I like them better. There are two types of XP in this game, micro XP and regular XP. If you're playing the story mode, which is essentially a campaign, you're going to use micro XP. And every time you earn five micro XP, you earn one real XP. However, I'm not going to do a story quest. I already have two campaigns going on on this channel. That is more than enough, I think. <laughs> so I'm going to do just a one-shot playthrough, which means we're just going to use the regular XP. Each hero, as you would expect, has two hands, even if it doesn't show in the picture, <laughs> has two hands and one body. So you can hold up to two hands worth of items and one body armor. Now comes the fun part picking out which class you want to use. So I decided for Bajorn, and by the way, Bajorn is from the uh, base game. So you can play him in the regular base game if you'd like, if you just get the retail version. He's going to be the Bone Crusher. Being the Bone Crusher, you get two abilities to start with. One is called a signature ability, and that costs no actions to use. And then we also have just an inherent class ability, and for him that's called First Blood. So how the signature, uh, signature ability works is you have to spend one XP and then you get this benefit. So he, he would spend one XP during his turn and then he gets attack plus one and defense minus one. Essentially he gets one additional hit, but because he gets one additional hit for his attack, when he defends, he's going to get one less shield. He does have a pretty awesome ability here with the first blood. When the hero enters an enemy zone or an enemy enters the hero zone, inflict one wound to the enemy. And what's important to note here is wounds versus those swords. Wounds are guaranteed hits, goes through any sort of shields. If they have dice that they can roll for shields, uh -uh, don't get it with wounds. But if there's a sword icon, that means that the, uh, the enemy can defend. So that's just important to know. Attack versus wounds. Make sure to, to take that into account. On the class sheet, you can see each different level. So what happens is when you first start out, you're on that first tile. We're at level one. Only level one abilities can be used. I can pay XP to get, get a level two ability if I want, but I can't use it until I get to the level two tile. 
But so what you have to do is this, there's a little number right here, and that's how much XP you have to spend during that specific part of the player uh, of the round when it's the experience points phase. You can spend that amount of experience and then decrease your, your XP by that amount to then gain that benefit. So we got plus one max health, charge, taunt, and then um, mace or hammer, you get an attack plus one. As you level up, you're going to get better levels here, but you can't, I can't choose this for w one level up and then choose this one over here for level two. I have to first do this um, plus one max health before I go to plus two max health. So make sure you, you do things linear, linearly, but I could choose like this one and then do this one and then go over here and do this one next so I can do this one. It's just, I have to have all the ones done before them in this class, uh, in the class list. If you think about it, for each hero, they can have one, two, three, four different special abilities just starting off the bat. As they level up, they're going to obtain more special abilities. And then their cards, so their um, weapons or their shields or defense, might actually have abilities as well. So you can see there's lots of things going on. I'm playing with four heroes, so I do apologize if I miss something. Just let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to make notes. But I personally think the way to play this game is with at least four heroes. I mean, three is probably okay, but I really like the four. You get a lot of variety, and it just, uh, the game, I think, scales really well at, the, at four. Unfortunately, with, with playing only one hero, the amount of treasures don't ever change, and so you're just going to get overloaded with treasures and get really too powerful, I think. So I personally think it's better with the four heroes where you have to trade and, and, and finagle a little bit more, and I prefer a little bit more of a challenge anyways. So let's do the four. Last thing I want to mention before we jump into the playthrough, I just want to show you on all the tiles, you're going to see locations where there's fire, uh, or a lantern, that means that those places are not in shadows. So therefore you can't use your shadow ability, shadow mode abil skills. But if you see where we start, we're actually in the shadows. So we technically can use our shadow mode skills right away. So you just have to watch that when you're looking at the different rooms here, when you're going through, oh, can I use that ability? Well, make sure you're in the shadows or you're not in the shadows, depending on what the ability is. That is the setup, Lightbringers. I hope you are all excited to jump into this and to go and defeat those elemental bosses. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you're excited for the playthrough. Hey, I do wanna mention, we do wanna do a couple quick call outs. Adam, um, Adam Smith from Rolling Solo, he's got a playthrough right now of the tutorial. Check his out. Also, Two Can Play That Game has probably one of the best how to play videos I've seen for Massive Darkness. Check that out. He also does a playthrough of the tutorial and he does it with one character. So you can kind of see the differences. He does the one character, um, he's doing the one character playthrough or he did the one character playthrough. Adam is doing two characters and then I'm going to do four characters and I'm doing a different, uh, I'm doing quest eight. And then I know Doug Herring, he's been playing this a lot. He's actually playing the story mode and I know he's planning on doing a playthrough at some point. So I'm just going to mention it now because if you watch it later, it might be there. But once I see it up, I'll make sure to link it. But those are all great YouTube channels. I highly recommend checking them out. You can see differences in the play. They're using different heroes than I am. I mean, there's just, you know, all these things that can be different. So I really suggest checking them out. Make sure to subscribe to them. They are awesome. But yeah, that's it. Hope you guys are excited. Let's jump in.